I ask people all the time. I bought Dre his first car. I bought Dre the drum machine he used. I put him in the studio endless, for an endless amount of hours. I built the studio and gave him a key to it that he was able to perfect his sound. And I also got him out of jail twice, but I didn't get him out the third time. What do you think changed his life the most? Mm, the person who helped him that one time? Well, no. Me not getting him out of jail the third time. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking he at the positive. Yeah. For the third time, changed his life for the most because he got mad at me. Ooh, you flip. See, I like how you flip shit, Lonzo. He got mad at me and mm -hmm. wanted to go to Rufus. Okay. It wasn't. So if you, you know, all the jail, if you would have got him out, he would have probably kept relying on you, and he would have never be the billionaire. Damn. Right. Okay. Easy was around, but I was the man. Easy was around, but I was man. He was easy. Was talking about doing some stuff and HBO and Rendezvous. It was never supposed to be easy. Easy rapping. It was. It, it was still Eric. He didn't. He didn't come easy. Even after he recorded, mm. he was trying to come up with a name. He was going to be Ewok, um, E Dub, or whatever the case may be. He had all kind of names that he was thinking about. Okay, and they came up with Easy finally. So. When I when I and, I and I tell people sometimes, man, it don't take but one thing to change the course of history, and me not getting Dre out of jail change the course of history. Damn, dog, love you know what? You always push it into perspective like that. I love Thank that. You. Yeah, at the at the beginning of the movie, I think that one of the opening scenes is Dre laying like next to or on a beat machine. Right, that would be the beat machine that you. Dre didn't have a wait, wait, that was the first piece of shit I saw in the movie. Uh, okay, he break it down. He was in next to a 1200. He didn't have a 1200. <laughs> See, only a producer would know some shit like that. I knew he, he I'm like, <laughs> we didn't get a 1200 till after the other, we didn't get 1200s till after uh, Curtis Blow left. We didn't get 1200s till after Curtis Blow taught us how to scratch. What do you mean? We, I never, look, 1200s came out in. I think 81, no, no, maybe 79, something like that. Okay. This and is 1200, right? We didn't need FP 1200s to turntables. There was no scratching. We were only blending. We had technique turntables, but we didn't have 1200s. I heard about 1200s, I'm sorry, in 77. Guys out of New York talked about them, okay? And the thought of a turntable costing $350 had blown my mind. Oh my God, 350, my God, three. It might have been, been 3,000. Okay, so it wasn't until um, Baby DMX actually brought his turntables to California to do a show with run with uh, Curtis Blow that we actually saw what 1200s actually did. Wow. So to see him with a 1200, a $350 turntable in the beginning of the movie when he's still working for me getting $50 a night, okay, <laughs> how the fuck is this supposed to happen? Okay, you know, it, it, it don't happen. So, I mean, you know, again, if you know the story, you can challenge the story. And, that, see, and that's the difference. When guys like me start talking about certain shit, I shut shit down because I know the fucking truth. I can shut shit down. People, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that tend to want to um, fabricate uh, even their history and what they did in West Coast hip hop. Okay, there's a lot of fat. Oh man, I was this. I was super nigga in 1994. Uh, 84. I was super nigga in 84, and I was kicking ass, and I was mixing, and I was had this money. No, you didn't. Okay, one but one but a handful of cats make doing it like that. Okay, but because you're talking to people who are young and don't know, they oh no shit. You can fly? Yeah, I can fly. I was flying in 84, but we just got fell off right now. But back in 84, I can fly. And <laughs> no shit. And I'm like, when I walk into the room and start looking around, oh, man, come Lonzo. Oh, Lonzo, Lonzo know I'm lying, okay? Oh, no, yep. You know, my, my uh, what they say, um, my spirit can make your devil uncomfortable, okay? Mm. A, a, a man's good spirit can make make the devil in you uncomfortable. So I, I can make I can make guys uncomfortable because sometimes they try to incorporate me in their shit. I don't remember that. I'm not gonna jeopardize my credibility 
to support your bullshit. Okay. There's a few people I know that do that. Okay. I've been on panels with them. And when I start talking, I'm like, all right, Lawson. I'm not co-signing that, man. Nope. Damn. Okay. You remember? No, I don't remember that. Okay. And that's the kind of shit that, you know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes one man's credit, one man's spirit can make the devil of somebody else, you know, kind of uh, very uncomfortable. 